Who are you and, and what do you do here at Microsoft? Okay, my and name is Neil Christensen. Okay. And I'm the lead for the file system filters group. And I am in the core file systems group, which is a group of about 150 people. And so you're going to show us on the whiteboard what I do. Is, what is file systems? Well, see, I get this question all, all the time. It's actually very hard to explain to people what I do. Uh, what a file system filter is, is it's a, it's a piece of the system that allows third-party applications to tie in and monitor what, um, what a file system is doing. And the most simple uh, example of that is an antivirus product. So antivirus products contain a file system filter that watches IOs coming in and out of the file system. And when it detects a virus, it uh, it cleans it or blocks the access or one of those things. But it, that's how it protects your machine. Okay. And so what my group is in charge of is dealing with that layer. Okay. And let me just draw you uh, a quick picture. Uh, here's user mode up here. And there's applications and all those things up there. Uh, so this is user. And this is kernel. And the way the system is organized is there's an I.O. manager. And whenever and all file system, all I.O. type operations come into the I.O. manager. And we have this thing called a stack. And this is actually a very um, nice feature of NT is that they have this stacked I.O. model. And what they have down here at the bottom are file systems. Now, there's lots of different ways to do I.O. There's lots of classes of drivers, but I just deal with this file system thing. And what they allow in between are these things called file system filters. And what it does is an I.O. comes down, filter sees it, can process it, can fail it, whatever. Goes down to the file system, he does his thing. Let's say it's a read, he reads the data. Then the I.O. completes and it comes back up to the filter and he can actually look at the results of this and then goes up to the I.O. manager and obviously this goes from the user and this big circle and how I.O. is. So the filter can play with this data. And the purpose of filters is to allow um, a third-party product to enhance the file system in some particular way without uh, having to write their own file system. I mean, can you imagine if every AV product had to write a file system to do their thing? That wouldn't work. And so that's the idea of filters. Now, what my group has done, and this is the way it used to be, and you could put multiple of these filters on the stack. You could have multiple of them layered there. There were some architectural issues with this model. And so what my group has done has made it is we've created this special filter called the filter manager. And I'm just going to abbreviate it there, filter manager. And then what it allows is it allows third party people to write filters that hang over here. And they tie into the filter manager. And then the filter manager takes these IOs and then sends them off to these what we call mini filters. Sends them off to the mini filters. They do their processing. And they have all the functionality that they have today. But it is a, uh, in many respects, it's a much cleaner and a much more robust environment uh, for filters. And I'll just give you a couple of examples. In this model, uh, a filter has to monitor every I.O. operation that can be generated by the system. They may not care about the I.O. operation, but it's their job to receive it and pass it on to the next guy. Even though simple things are prone to errors and, they can, and people get it wrong and, and the system crashes. Well, in, the, in this new model that we have, a filter only says, this is what I care about. I care about a create. And so that's the only thing that they receive in all the other IOs. You know, the filter manager is our piece. We can make sure it's right. And so they, they aren't getting involved with IOs that they don't care about, which therefore makes the probability of them crashing the system less, as a simple example. Another uh, big advantage that we provided is we allowed these filters to unload due to design decisions made back in you know, the early 90s when NT was invented, and they were good decisions at the time, they decided that these filters can never unload once they load. And uh, there were reasons for that back then, but those reasons are gone now. But it's hard to change these models, and so we had to invent a new model. What would be some of the reasons? Lack of RAM? Or? No, it wasn't the lack of RAM, it was performance. Uh, the processors were a lot slower, and to do an unload, you had to track the IOs, and that requires takes locks, which slows things down. The processors of today are so much faster than processors of, you know, 15 years ago. That, that additional overhead that we take to track this in our performance benchmarking is like 1%. 
back then it would be like a 10 or 15 percent hit, and it was too expensive. And so they were reasonable design decisions at the time, but they are not beneficial today, especially as the number of filters in the system is growing. Um, for example, our um, we have this group inside the company called OCA for online crash analysis, and what they do is they're the ones that get these crash dumps that come in that people send to us. And he reported that, that um, there are like 30,000 drivers out there. Now, they're not all file system filters, but there's a lot of file system filters out there, and they're growing every day. And he can actually tell us that, you know, there's new, nine new drivers a day added to the system each and every day, you know, 365 days a year. I guess I should introduce uh, some stuff. That's Charles Torrey from right. Channel 9 and Dana Epp. Hi. And you're a customer who's using the filter manager, right? Right. Yes. And so this is a new architecture we've laid out. Uh, some of the other benefits is that they can unload. Uh, we also, one of the limited resources in the system is there's a kernel stack. And I guess you are all nerdly types, so I can explain this. This stack is a very limited resource. And in the old model, every filter sort of had to pass it on and so they consumed stack. And we've actually had issues uh, with stack overflows. And so one of the benefits of the new model is, is that we, it's a callback model instead of a call through model. And so we call them, come back, call them, come back. And so we can have 100 filters here and we won't consume any more stack than one filter does today, which is a, is a real benefit. So we can put a lot more filters on the machine. Now, would I want to run on a machine with 100 filters? Probably not, because it'd be running very slow. Uh, but who knows? You know, 10 years from now, the processors will be so much faster that there'll be reasons for having it. Now, what we're doing here this week is we, read twice a year, have these things called an IFS plug fest. It stands for Installable File System Plug Fest. And what we do is we invite vendors, uh, we invite developers from companies that make file system filters and also there are companies here that make file systems as well because they want to do proper testing and interrupt testing. And we, um, we set up machines in, that have uh, multiple different OSs that Microsoft is working on or has, is about to release or, or has released in the past. And for example, at this plug fest, we have five different operating systems that they can choose from. Um, the different OSs are like we have a version of Windows 2000, we have XP Service Pack 2, which was just released. Um, we have Server 03 Service Pack 1, which is about to be released. Uh, Server 03 R2, which is a new OS, and this is actually one of the first times these people have seen that one. And we actually had a, ver a preliminary version of Longhorn that um, they could play with and, and take a look at. And one of the real things that these, these filter, the filter community is interested in that's coming in Longhorn, for example, is uh, TXF, which is Transactional NTFS. And this is a, it's a modification to the NTFS file system um, that adds transaction semantics if applications want it. And this is going to affect filters. And so we've been talking about this. We've, as Dana knows, we've yeah. spent the last couple of days uh, giving presentations on this. But the goal and the purpose of these plug fests and why they were started, and we have been doing them for about six years now, was that file system filters were causing a lot of failures. And we needed to do something. And so we decided the best thing to do is better train the filter community and developers. And so we uh, bring them on the campus. It's no fee to come to these events. We provide all the hardware and the setup and a place. Uh, multiple engin uh, Microsoft engineers here are here. And we help debug and find problems because we have access to the source, things that they probably would be very difficult for them to find elsewhere. Like we helped, uh, I helped Dana track down a bug uh, like on the first day. Yeah, the logging step with the synchronization. Yes, and he was getting a very interesting bug check and we took a look at it and thought about some, got some information from it and we had it figured out in what, an hour? Yeah, we, once you went to the source code, it was very quick. It so was really nice. So. Yeah. And we do that um, for a lot of them. Now this particular plug fest, there's approximately almost 50 companies at. This is actually the largest plug fest that we have uh, had. And for example, there's like 14 antivirus vendors here. Wow. And, I didn't uh, know there was 14 antivirus vendors. Uh, there's probably about 40 or 50 in the world, wow. uh, the different ones. And in fact, uh, Vince, who is our OCA representative, he said the people at this plug fest have released over 300 drivers out there. And so, and he sees 
every one of them, <laughs> and, and crashes and stuff like that. So now, are, are people at the plug fest here? Are they like video card drivers? No, no. The, these are these are file system filters. Yep. And file system filters are not associated with any devices. They're a, what we call a non-device driver, and they load into the system. So we we're not associated with any hardware. There are some vendors that have file systems for like writing DVDs. So, or CDs, so in that set, like Rock Seal, for example, here, um, they, they will bring hardware because they care about, you know, certain particular drives or that thing. So in that sense, there may be, but they're, in general, they're just a generic CD writer or DVD writer. So they work across all of them. So we don't have any specific hardware. But these guys have lots of file system filters and there's lots of different kinds of them. We have, you know, replication filters that replicate between machines. There's encryption filters, undelete filters, um, antivirus, as I mentioned. What's that? Intrusion prevention. Intrusion prevention. Yeah. Yeah. Quota, quota filters. Um, and there's many classes that I'm not even mentioning. I mean, there's 50 companies out there. Yeah. And it's not even close to the number of companies that are, that are available that can yeah. come. So, um, but it's a, it's a fun event. It's, it's hard work. It's hard work on us because we uh, spend a lot of time debugging and looking at issues. But what's nice is we find problems in, in our products. It's not just for them. Yeah. But, you know, we, we're always doing new things and we find bugs in Microsoft software. And so it benefits everybody. Now, what I, I found interesting about talking to Dana, you're, you're at such a low level that like the innovations you're putting in the long run really affect all of us playing, you know, apps at the top, right? Yes. Um, so you mentioned a little bit about what you're doing in Longhorn. What, what, do you, what kind of end user benefit might we see through the stack in those innovations? Well, the truth is you shouldn't see anything, but the work we should do should be totally transparent to you. Okay. If, if you can see that it's there, we've done something wrong. Because we're at a low level in the system, we're down in the I.O. stacks, and uh, you really shouldn't see anything. How it be benefits the end user is um, their system is more stable, and that is what we do. And, that, and that's the bottom line that, frankly, most end users care about, because they don't want their system to crash. And just so you know, this new tech filter manager technology is actually, it is in Longhorn, of course, but it's actually also going out in, uh, for Win Windows 2000, for XP, and for Server 2003. So it's, uh, it's going out on all the platforms. And one of the reasons for that, and this is very interesting, this is uh, somewhat different than maybe other products in the system, is that these filters that third-party people write, they need to support multiple OSs, and they want one filter that will run across all these operating systems because it's too hard for them to support um, you know, multiple versions of their filter, for right. example. And so that's very important for what we're doing is to be very cross-OS independent. And that's what's really good from a third-party point of view is your code quality can be a lot better if we only have to manage one code base. And with the filter manager, you have a lot less code to deal with. In the legacy drivers, there's a lot of, like in my, my stuff, is I only really look at like one particular thing that has to deal with the I.O. I don't really care about the rest of it, but I still had to write code to support that. With a filter manager, I don't have to do that. That's all gone. So just, it's the old principle, of less lines of code, theory is less lines of bugs, better quality. And that's why, and that benefits everyone, right? Microsoft has less crashes, which aren't attributed to them, right? Like we were talking, the OCA group yesterday was here, and they were saying that 82% of the crash dumps that are coming in are actually from third-party drivers. So that's not just filter drivers. That's right. drivers across the entire platform. Yeah. But what they're saying is everyone loves complain that the blue screens of deaths are Microsoft's problem. Nine times out of ten, it's not. It's third-party drivers. Some way, say, for them. Not always. There, there are times where it could be related to Microsoft. But at the end of the day, that's a lot more people out there. Right. And so what's great is the plug fests are good because they provide an opportunity for us to work with Microsoft and fix those issues. So quality goes up for all our customers. And that's what we yes. want, right? And so we see things now like we got access to learn about transactional NTF NTFS way before it's released. Right. And they've actually asked us for feedback. So we can actually tell them, well, we have unique situations such as this. Have you thought about that? And they can say, well, no, but what we can do is do this, this, and this. And the engineers here, they're really good about that. So you can go into a room and spend a half hour talking about a unique problem. And we're already seeing that. There's new stuff getting rolled in now as of today because of what people have been talking about. And that's because you're being a lot more open about it. 
and that will make everybody a lot happier. Right. Yeah, that, I heard you guys were working two shifts around the clock to fix some things that these guys have found. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, we, we, we've been here late at night <laughs> finding stuff. I didn't get to go home on Monday night till like 10. Yeah. Uh, just helping because people were here, so we should help. So how many how many different ways have you found to get a blue screen of death? Oh, jeez. <laughs> These guys can do it an infinite number of ways <laughs> because they're kernel mode components. Um, there are so many different ways. I've seen lots of different and interesting bugs. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're very strange. I did have a unique situation where um, it wasn't at one of the plug fests, but it was one of the people that regularly attend, and there, a customer was having a problem with their particular filter at their site. And because it was a big customer and it was critical, I got called in to help figure out what it is. And it took us a week to figure out the problem in this third-party company's filter. But so we finally figured it out, and it was very complex and hard. But uh, after a week of hard work, we were able to find it, and the customer was happy. The fix was trivial, as most of these things are, you know, and they had to patch out the next day, and all of a sudden all the problems went away. So, I mean, they were crashing. They had servers. They had like three or four servers crashing every day wow. out of some large data center and that was just unacceptable and it was this and it was a third party product and they one of the issues we have had is that the IO system is fairly complex back when people did this in the beginning we didn't have a lot of documentation one of the things we've done over the last five years is we've written a lot of documentation and we have a doc writer who, um, who is excellent she does a great job and, and, and there's a lot more documentation out there now. But this third-party company simply was not following the rules that was even in the documentation. And so they were viol violating those rules. And, but it took a while to figure out exactly why and how. And, you know, probably some of the people out on Channel 9 world don't really understand kernel mode. And they, the idea of when you're in kernel mode is the most privileged yes. place. And so you can do anything. Yes. And you, so if you make a mistake, you can crash the OS. So I just, want, I, mean, I just wanted to point that out. So uh, one other question I do have for you in, in this filter model. If I write it, one of these plug will guys and uh, I, you know, an exception happens by making a mistake, does this guy handle no. the problem? No, it, it does not. We talked about that when we were designing the filter manager, laying it out. The problem is in kernel mode, you really have to do stuff right. And, and, and the problem is, is that, for example, this filter could have acquired some log and to keep track of you know exactly which locks he has and stuff and then release those and clean up it it doesn't work okay. the way NT I, there are OS's that do that type of thing really but the, yes um, I worked with a person at a different company in the past that had written such an OS it was very interesting what they how they did it and so the concepts are available but NT is not, simply not designed for it today is it, is it like the micro kernel versus macro kernel sort of thing? It no. wasn't an abstraction? So it was not an abstraction. Okay. They, they built in to track every single resource that a given driver owned, including locks, memory, everything, and they could literally undo it all. Wow. And so it sort of had transaction type semantics built into the OS and how all operations functioned. And so what we could have attempted to do something like that, it wouldn't have been foolproof, and then all it would do is mask the problems of these guys. And so we made the design decision just, hey, if it faults in him, it faults in him, and they should fix their problem. And, and it's more obvious. Fair enough. And so it's a good question, though, because uh, we did seriously talk about what could be done sure. uh, to try to make it a little more, more robust. But masking the problems in the long run doesn't help anyone. It simply slows things down and makes them harder to find. And there'll be weird experiences up in user mode, for example. That is exactly correct. That is exactly correct. And realize the NTIO model is actually amazingly flexible because they have this IO manager and this way of past generating IO that is all designed asynchronous. Um, you can, it, it handles all classes of devices from, you know, high performance hard disks to video cards to network cards to toasters or whatever device you want to put on there. I mean, if you think about how many devices have showed up in the last few years, like cameras and, and you know, pluggable disk drives and all these things, BioModel handles it very nicely. And so it's, uh, NT in this way is architected very nicely. Uh, they did a nice job back then. There was just a couple issues we had to help them along. Certainly. Uh, with the filter manager. And it's 
proven very nice. Uh, inside of Microsoft, we have several groups developing filters. We have a lot of attendees at the Blugfest that are running mini filters now. And uh, so it's, and it's been very reliable and very robust for them. Fantastic. What else do you think pe people would like to know on Channel, you know, channel 9 developers? Channel 9 developers? Yeah, well, if they were sitting here in this room, what would they be asking? Um, well, I guess one of the things is that, like we've already made clear, is that kernel mode and user mode is an entirely different beast when coding. You know, you, we're not going to sit and talk about it all day, but there's a lot of constraints that are put on you when you're in the kernel. So you can't have the old adage, you know, you don't write C-sharp code in the kernel. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. So there's a lot of uh, thinking that has to go in there, and it's really nice to come to these kind of events. And so if I was going to say anything, is if you're writing kernel code, come to these events. I'm saying if, if there was a developer from uh, Channel 9 here, yeah. what would what, they ask? You want to know? What oh, would yeah. he ask, Neil? Yes. Yeah. Oh. That's the hard question. That's the hard Robert question. Scoble. <laughs> yeah, the Robert Scoble question. Hmm. Um, uh, I guess like, one of the things would be is, what is the benefits to Microsoft for holding the plug fests? Like, why, why oh, should you it? That's not a hard well, question. You, you, want to, <laughs> you wanted me to ask him if he's going to explain a B-side, and that's saying, that ain't going to happen. So I don't know. So I think he's good. He's done a really good job explaining it. See, remember that the filter manager was originally, I'm not sure if this is completely right, so you have to correct me if I'm wrong, was originally designed for Longhorn and then brought back. And so what's interesting is, is that uh, people are having to learn this now because, well, we've got to deal with the operating systems that are out there. And I guess one of the questions, and this is a hard question because a lot of people are still writing legacy drivers because there's a lot of code out there and it's easier. Why should we move to the mini filter? I already know the answer to this, but Channel okay, 9 guys win. Neil? Yes. Why should developers move to the mini filter? Okay, uh, that's actually a very good question. Mm -hmm. um, because the filter manager and the mini filter model solves several architectural issues with, with the current model that it cannot be addressed any other way. And um, I'll just list them. One is that a mini filter can be unloaded at any point in time. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, with the old architecture, once loaded, forever loaded until the system reboots. So one of the advantages is, and, and you've heard this inside of Microsoft, is we're trying to eliminate reboots. Well, without this, there, a filter vendor really had no option for doing it. Second option is, among filters, ordering is very important. Um, for example, a, a simple example, if you had an encryption filter and an antivirus filter. Well, if the antivirus filter is below the encryption filter, he's going to see encrypted data. And he's not going to find very many viruses scanning encrypted data. So you want to make sure that the antivirus filter is above that. Well, based on how the system is designed, again, design decisions they made long ago, is that when a filter loads, he can only attach to the top of the stack. And so we've had problems when a new product's installed, he attaches to the top and he's not ordered properly relative to the other filters. Well, with the new model, the filter can load at any time and is properly ordered relative to all other filters regardless. And so we can, basically what it means is we can insert uh, filters into the middle of the stack or the top, wherever, and we can remove them. Um, I talked about earlier about kernel stack overflows. That's a real issue. Um, eliminating those. Um, another one, there, was, there were seven on my list. Oh, well, another one is this model is designed, as I said, filters want to run across multiple OS platforms. And obviously these different platforms have different functionality in them. And um, so filters are, tend to be coded to the least common denominator. And it's a lot of work to, you know, dynamically import APIs and and all this stuff. Well, the filter manager model, you can register, for example, you can build a filter designed for Longhorn and for TXF and, call the new, and register for the new TXF APIs and callbacks and stuff. And if you load that on Windows 2000, it'll just load. You won't get those calls, but it'll load and work transparently. And so it greatly simplifies your multi-OS support. That's another example. Um, that's all that comes, pops to my head right at the moment. There's a couple others. So now, to go back to the unloading part, if yeah. I write a mini filter and then I want to update it or change it, I, it's not going to cause a reboot. No. You, 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 can, you can just say unload, it unloads, you load the new one, you know, you have a, third, you know, a few millisecond window when there's no filter, it doesn't cause any problems at all. Okay. 
and it loads instantaneously. That's a great loads and unloads. So see, that's an end user benefit. There no more that. reboots. <laughs> that actually, that's a very good point. That is an excellent end user benefit. And Microsoft has been really pushing to eliminate reboots, and we've done a lot of work. And this is just a, another one of those steps that make it possible. And, and again, this is why it's going across all the OSs versions. 